We're continuing in John 17. We'll be looking at verses 9 and 10 today. So brothers and sisters, if you would rise as we read. I'll, I will read from verses uh, six, 6 to 9. This is the inerrant word of God. I have manifested your name to the men whom you have given me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they have known that all things which you have given me are from you. For I have given to them the words which you have given me. And they have received them, and have known surely that I came forth from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. And all mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. Father, again, we ask that our eyes would be open to understand and apply your word now. We praise you, Lord Jesus, that you pray for us. We love you and thank you for this prayer that we will look at. Open our eyes again and our minds, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. Well, last week in verses 6 through 8, we saw five actions by the disciples that they took, these being the men whom the Father had given to his Son. And they could do these things, they could take these actions <clears throat> by faith because the Lord Jesus said he had manifested himself to them. He had manifested his Father to them. So they kept his word, it says. They kept his word. That's by grace. That is by faith. They knew that all that Jesus gave them was from God the Father. And they received his words, it says. They received his words as the word of God, and they believed that Jesus was sent by his Father. He is God. And may we now have a similar heart. May we receive his words and rejoice that he prays for us. So verse 9, I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for those whom you have given, given me, for they are yours. So first of all, he says, I pray for them. The Lord Jesus does things for his people that he does not do for the wicked and the unbelieving. He is praying for the elect, that is, those who are given to him. And it is for these given ones, the ones that were given to, to the Lord, that he died. And John 10 makes this very clear. The good shepherd, the Lord Jesus said, gives his life for the sheep. His redemption is sufficient for all, powerful enough to save all, and he should be proclaimed to all, but redemption is effectual to those who are called, who then receive him and receive his word. And praise God, we are able to persevere because he intercedes for us. We would be unable to do so without his intercession. He prays for us. He upholds us. And he brings us before his Father because we are his. Romans 8 says, It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. So he died, he rose, he ascended, and he sits uh, with his Father, and he prays for us. Hebrews 7 tells us that our Lord Jesus always lives to make intercession for those who come to God through him. Hebrews 9 tells us our Lord entered into heaven itself, it says, now to appear in the presence of God for us. For us. And in 1 John, praise God, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Now when Judas fell, when he denied the Lord, he did not repent. But when Peter fell, he repented and was restored. Luke 22, in Luke 22, the Lord said uh, to Peter, Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. It is incomprehensible the power of the Lord Jesus Christ praying for us as his people. And really, that should assure us and it should strengthen us and give us courage to press on when we don't feel like that, like we, like we can. And then in the next part of verse 9, after saying he prays for his own, he said, I do not pray for the world, but for those whom you have given me. And as we will see when we look in more detail later at verse 20, Lord Jesus said, I do not pray for these alone, that was his disciples then, 
but also for those who will believe in me through their word. So those elect according to the foreknowledge of God, those chosen in him before the foundation of the world, those who have heard the word from other disciples and receive it. And that would include us. Our Lord Jesus is praising his Father again that these disciples and we all were given to him by his Father. And then verse 10 says, And all mine, speaking to his Father, all mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. And again, we see that the Father and the Son are the same in substance, equal in power and glory. The Lord is saying here that although given to him as his disciples, as his people, as his flock, they are still the Father's, and the ones the Father gives to him are also his own. They cherish us equally, eternally. And indeed, everything in the universe belongs to the Father and the Son. And with the Spirit, we are equally the Lord's. There is no unequal ownership here. There's no partiality. We are the disciples and saints of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we can rejoice in the blessed roles that they each have in our redemption and in our sanctification, in our whole life. Isaiah 43 says, Thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel. In other words, my people, his people. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. He claims us, praise God, as his own. So the Lord says, you are mine. And we can say, joyfully, I am yours. And in doing that, he is glorified and he is pleased and we are blessed. In our covenant promises this morning, we were reminded from 1 Peter 2. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people. You are part of his own special people. And so as you partake, dear family, of these elements now, which remind us of his love for us and that he prays for us, remember and rejoice that you are his. You are not your own. You are bought at a great price. And he has brought you into his family by his grace. Let's pray. Lord, what a blessing to know that you are praying for us and that you care for your own and you continually uphold us. Oh Lord, you are gracious and loving and we are overwhelmed to think of the cost of our redemption as your needy sheep, your flock. Oh Lord, we desire to come now and rejoice in you and in our hearts to give thanks that we can say, I am yours, we are yours. And to know you have claimed us, saying, you are mine. Oh, Lord, may we be strengthened now in this grace. For we ask it in the name of our Lord and our Master, Jesus Christ. Amen.